like to acknowledge the traditional owners of this land. Care of country is in your hands. Your knowledge from the beginning until now. Know-how, traditional ways of night skies and days, animal ways, the sea, the desert, the forest, the rivers and trees, the islands, terrains. Spirits remain in this land to understand connection, protection, watch for the stranger and the known, Indigenous ranger. It's what's in your heart, so listening is where we start. I work for Department of Agriculture and Water Resources, um, so I'm a community liaison officer. So we're kind of the conduits between the scientists um, in the community and the rangers as well. Um, so what the scientists want, we go out and um, work with the rangers and the community to um, sort of get the information. The rangers are really good because they've got heaps of different skills um, to go out there in the environment and get the information for us. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities have been protecting food sources, including significant animals and plants, for millennia. So many choices. I think I'll start with break and fix them. Okay, I'm gonna go to that one. Yeah, and then biosecurity and country tours. Okay. And then the bottom tree. Yeah, let's go now. Okay, all right. I am a big convert of the Ranger program. I think everything inspires me about that because it's a program that really does tackle a lot of the social norms within Aboriginal communities. Yeah, a lot of the co-benefits that you get out of the Ranger program are significant. I've been a Ranger for three years now. I was a health worker for 30 years, so it's a big difference. Yeah, um, I think Ranger's the best. I love it, it's my dream job. Now I've been nearly two years now with Rangers and I love it, I, I love the work. I used to work with uh, natural resource management stuff with lots of different companies in the past that always wanted to be a ranger. I've been looking to get into either parks and wildlife or a ranger program for quite some time and uh, seen the opportunity pop up and I went for it. <laughs> I started out in reception and watching the guys walking out, in and out, um, you know, the interest really started to grow. I was asked a lot of questions and um, they saw a need for female rangers so they, um, the government agencies that we were working with at the time said, hey, you need to keep her on, and yeah, so it's just opened many doors for me. Five years, Ranger. I've been a Ranger going on to six years now. I've almost been a Ranger for nearly four years now, and I started off as a casual, like every other Ranger, and I made my way up, and I'm now the head Ranger of my Ranger group. It's one of the greatest jobs to be doing, especially on your own country, you know, and working and protecting the wildlife which you grow up around, and your grandfather and your, also your ancestors, you know, which was looking after before us. We came managers, you know. Well, I'm a senior ranger at the moment, so my role is there to help the younger generation come in and hopefully get ranger jobs and show them my ropes of what they can do after I'm not there or not around. So it'd be good to see them come in and do stuff like that. My favourite part of the job is probably being out in the water. I like being out in the water since I like being a marine ranger. checking the seagrass. We have five different species of seagrass here. 
the aim is to see how much um, seagrass is down in the bottom and we can record it and take photos. There it is. By this screen here, you can see the bottom of the seabed and see if there's any seagrass. And I can see some, so I will take a photo to video it as well. So after um, Cyclone Yassi, we had a lot of um, turtles and dugons washed up on our beach and the seagrass had, um, had been gone as well. And we're just monitoring to make sure that the seagrass is back for the dugon and turtle. We've got a couple of local guys from the Bardi Ranger program. You know, they do the dugong tagging and monitoring. Uh, a couple of those guys were actually seconded over to Dubai and actually went over there and did some tagging around for the dugongs around there. So we flew to Abu Dhabi, out to Dubai, and we drove to Abu Dhabi, <coughs> stayed there all night. Then the next morning we shoot it out to one of those Sheik's Islands. Stayed there for five days. So I taught this Arab guy how to jump in and how to grab the dugong and tell him all the all the bad side about it, what you gotta be careful for. And he ended up grabbing it on third third jump and tagging it. So I was like, that was more than happy I the government was, was stoked. Everything everything was a success. All of a sudden, you're starting to see the international appeal about the skill set that these guys have from a local area being applied, you know, thousands of kilometres away in a, in a foreign country. So I think that's uh, quite refreshing to see that. Being born on the land um, helps a lot. And you know what's meant to be there and what's not meant to be there. But also there's a cultural connection. So there's song lines that go through that country and we understand that there's um, strong connection to that country. So I don't want anything to happen, no, no sort of ferals and um, diseases and things to go into our country. Most of my knowledge on like cultural knowledge I got from my grandfather, which he, his name is Paulie Cox. He's one of the eldest living blog up in my community. Um, he was born in 1930 up in Big Bay there in the community. And I just got most of the knowledge of him, you know, just teaching me on hunting, gathering and different certain tree name, language names, you know, and place names also. And I really, got interested in that, you know, so when I joined the ranger group, I came into the work office and then I found out, like, you know, we're looking after those sort of stuff, you know, and we're trying to integrate it with Western science, and that's where we started to learn about the two-way learning for Western science and our cultural knowledge, so when we're combining it to two-way learning, so that's one thing great, so, and that, that's why I came fascinated about some of the knowledge, so, but it's also, Every day as a ranger, you're learning new things too, you know? So I'm also learning still as I'm learning, as I got some of the knowledge already in my head. I got my chainsaw ticket. I've got, um, you know, a drone license now as well. So that's pretty cool. I'll probably crash them anyways, <laughs> but you know. <laughs> um, I have a Cert 3 in um, conservation land management. I also um, doing a coxswain ticket halfway through that, halfway through doing my compliance in Cert 4. I have, um, yeah, like front end loader, bobcat, excavator. Yeah, all these tickets that I never imagined I'd have, so now I've got them. We've been using GoPros lately in uh, Rapid Creek. Put them in the water for about five to 10 minutes. See what comes through, what's swimming around down there. Oh, yeah. The tablet that's pretty much a real simplified version of like a GPS and it's got a whole bunch of programs on it where you can mark out points um, and then you can upload them onto the, a computer so you can see what you've done. You can also take photos of the places you're at. You know, gone are the days of paper and pens. It still works, you know. Sometimes we do need to rely on it. Um, but it's just so much easier, you know, just being able to collect that information on, on a um, tablet, go back into the office and just sync it, you know, so every day it's sync it before we head out in the field and then sync it when we go back in. And it helps us with our reporting as well. And I think data is really important to collect because it shows us 
um, you know, what we've done and you can see the progress over the years. I don't think any words could explain what it feels like to be in the presence of this tree. I could tell you that it's a West Australian boab, an iconic tree of this region. I could tell you that it's very, very old. It's got stories, stories to tell of this landscape over centuries. I could tell you that I've been here for a very short time as part of the Kimberley Rangers Conference. But I know that this tree is significant. You feel it. Its presence is here. Its presence has welcomed everyone. And it makes us feel safe to be on Bardi country, to be with all the people past, present, and to be under this tree and its shade long into the future. Within Parks and Wildlife Northern Territory Commission, they've got a junior rangers program. It's from nine to 12 year olds. And yeah, my son, he is ecstatic. He loves the work I do. He has said to me quite a few times he'd love to grow up to be a ranger looking after country and looking after wildlife. And yeah, he is so pumped to be part of a junior ranger program. And they do a lot of animal handling, animal feeding. Sounds like the yeah. best time ever. But they get to go there at night as well as during the day. So they're gonna have a daytime, nighttime experience. So yeah, it sounds really awesome. It's good to get the kids out of the, the community out in country doing stuff. And then it's also good to get the kids from out of the city, out in the bush, you know, just so they kind of get connected and you know, they get to appreciate the things that we grew up doing, um, you know, doing as kids as well. We're starting to go into the school, teach them about what rangers are doing and bring them out on country and show them some of our historical fish trap, which is still maintained by some of us rangers. And it, the kids are liking it. They have their own ranger logos on their um, own uniform. And almost every one of them want to be me. I want to be a ranger. I want to do the things I do. I want to go to Abu Dhabi, I want to tag dugong, I want to tag turtle. It's just what we do and it's fun. I, it's, no, it's, it's our normal life, what we normally do. They look up to us because I think it's a pretty sweet job. Um, I mean, I know when I was a kid, I didn't like being indoors. I didn't see myself be, having an indoor job. So, I mean, I get to work outside. I get to see a lot of, a lot of things and I'm always learning. So, yeah, it's pretty good. My grandson, he loves to be a ranger because just seeing me as a, as a mentor, you know, and he, he wants to be a ranger as he grow up. So our goal is that we want our generation to do the same thing, care for our land, look after our land, and be rangers and do what we're doing now. For us Yongho people back in North East Arnhem, so we have a really strong connection to the land and it sort of sustains us and it's our culture, it's our everything, so we look after it really well. And, our whole life is sort of based around the land and the sea, so if we don't look after it, it's not going to look after us. I've got a nine-year-old son, so I really love to be a really like good role model for my son as well as the rest of my family. And yeah, my dad, my mum, they're all just so proud of me, and I'm so proud of myself. I honestly didn't realise I could get into a position like this. Um, but That's yeah, amazing. Like, that deserves so a high much. five. Yes, Thank you. Sister, so good. <laughs> the extended family of each rangers, their whole life is lifted. You know, they feel a lot better because of this one family member that's on the ranger group. Us rangers are doing all this to protect our land. And that's the reason all us rangers love our jobs, so we look after our land. As the saying goes, from little things, big things grow. So, yes, I agree with that so much. Yeah.